friends and welcome back to the farm. So it is a cold 32 degrees out here and we need to go check on the chickens and all the other animals to so come on along. All right friends, so we're gonna be going inside of our chicken coop and I'm gonna show you what we have going on inside here. All right friends, so the previous owners left a wood burning stove inside the chicken coop and this is what she used to keep the whole barn warm during the winter time when she had cattle running through here and all of her chickens. So we are starting to do that as well because it is cold and I don't want my ladies who are used to Southern California weather to get uh, frostbite on their uh, combs and everything else. So I've got some wood here and I'll show you our wood burning stove. All right friends, so I'm gonna go ahead and put some wood in here. I've already got it going, so I'm just gonna add to the fire. But this feels nice. I wish I had this inside my house. All right friends, so I wanted to show you Bigfoot. This is one of our oldest hens. We've had her for five and a half years. And she was our second round of our um, chickens that we got in Southern California. And now I want to introduce you to Miss Lady. All right, friends, here is Lady. This is our original, very first chicken that we ever had. We've had her almost six years, and she is doing great. She made it all the way to the promised land. She is one of my prettiest chickens. I do really like Miss Lady. We are looking forward to getting some baby chicks from her, hopefully in spring, with one of the roosters that we have here, Mr. Uh, Mr. Rock or Mr. Tut. Those are our two roosters that we have. All right, and Mr. Rock here, he is one of the very first chickens that we produced on our farm in Southern California. He came from one of our barred rock hens and we were able to get him uh, with one of the mamas over here. She took care of him, she hatched him out and she produce this beautiful uh, rooster that we have right here. All the ladies that you see in here and Mr. Rock are all staying close to the fire because they are not used to this weather. They're used to Southern California where it never gets below 65. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm glad we have this heat, this uh, fire in here for them because if not, I'm afraid we'd lose probably a lot of our hens this winter. All right, so here we have some of our first nesting boxes that we made uh, when we first got here our ladies have stopped producing. I think we're getting like maybe one egg a day. And we do have a bunch of newer ones, the sapphires and the Americanas that should be producing right now. So I'm not sure if they're going to produce with the cold weather or not. But let me take you on the other side and I'll show you the other nesting boxes that we just put in for our increased number of ladies. Come on over here. Over here we have our sapphire gems. And these are one of our newer breeds that we just got. Um, they're about four months old and they actually started laying in the nesting boxes. We haven't seen any eggs yet from them, but they got used to sitting in the nesting boxes. I was worried that they weren't gonna come and roost in here because they're pretty wild. They are outside all the time, never in the barn. But since it's been cold, this is where they've been. So I'm excited that they know where to go when they start laying their eggs. All right, as you can see, a lot of our ladies are in here. They are not normally in here. When it's warmer, they're outside. As soon as I open that door, they're outside. But because it's been below 30, they have been in here until the sun really comes out and comes over our mountains and warms it up. So I've been feeding them in here. Now we are starting to go through that feed. At the first couple months that we were here during the summertime, they were hardly touching their feed. They were out there getting bugs, doing everything that they want to do outside. In here, they're definitely going through feed now. All right, friends, so here's our Hereford pigs, our two females and our male. They are getting so big, and I have to like quickly run into their pen when I'm bringing them their food before they knock me over and try to get out. And they don't try to get out because they want to run around. They try to get out because they want food. You can see Minnie right here. She is our runt and how big she has gotten. I was concerned that she wasn't going to get very big, but she is definitely starting to grow. And then we have Miss Petunia. She is definitely the biggest of the girls. 
and Mr. Herford. He is our meat pig. But they are sweet. They are mighty. Here we have Pumba, and he is our Berkshire uh, pig, and he is also going to be our breeder pig. <laughs> he is massive. He is a big puppy dog. He is sweet as can be, but he is massive, and he is scary when you come into his cage and you try to feed him. He wants that food. You're carrying it, and he's going to try to knock you down just to get to his food, not in a mean way. He's very, very sweet. So we actually developed this little contraption here where I can feed him in his bowl. So I put it in here and then I, I cut this out so I can just put this through and not have to worry about getting knocked over. And this way he can't pull it in. We built this right here. So that way he can't pull it into him and I have to go in to get it. This way when he's done eating, I can just pull it right out. So a lot of mornings it's just me out here feeding all the pigs and the animals. So this is a safer way for me because if anything were to happen, I accidentally get knocked over um, or get hurt. I'm not going to be able to scream for anybody to come help me. So for now, this is going to work until we find something better to do. If you have any suggestions, drop them down in the comments. I would greatly take any suggestions that you have on how to better feed our pigs safely for me as I do this by myself in the mornings. So all of our chihuahuas and other dogs are inside except for the husky. Coda here loves the cold weather and he is enjoying himself out here in Kentucky. He has come to life since being out here. Back in California, our backyard with the pool was about from this tree over here to that tree over there. That's about it. And with a big old pool in the middle of it. So he didn't have much room to run around. He definitely got in the pool though and did some laps. But uh, being here, he has this whole mountain to run, all of our property, and he is really loving life. He's out from 5 o'clock in the morning till 9 o'clock at night, just being a true husky. This makes me happy right here. Seeing him this happy, it makes me happy. We made, we made a good decision coming out here. All right, friends, thanks for coming by the homestead today as we take you on a little tour of our farm animals and the barn. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share with your friends and family. As always, I hope all is well and have a blessed day. of our barred rock he came from one of our barred rock hens